Uh, Tim Warren is a licensee that came through training several years back. I don't even remember when, uh, but I want to make sure Tim is actually on the line here and unmuted. Tim, you with us? I am. Hey, welcome. How you doing, Patrick? I am doing terrific. Where is that picture taken right there that I see of you? Um, we did a, a photo shoot uh, for our website. Uh, that's in Railroad Park in downtown Birmingham. They created a, a green space where the railroad viaduct used to run through for the steel industry, and they've turned it into a really beautiful park, and we have a minor league ballpark right behind that area. It's a really nice place. Cool. That's a great background. Now, here's the real picture I like. This is oh. your wife. <laughs> there's, the be there's the better half. So. There you go. Uh, this is Robin, and Robin couldn't be on the webinar today because, well, they've got a very big, busy business going on, so I had to pull Tim away just for this hour uh, webinar. Uh, yeah, she was, really, she was really sorry about that. Uh, she, we have somebody out on vacation right now, and we just started up a new practice last week, so we're pretty busy at the moment. So. Oh, I can imagine. Well, Tim, thank you for taking this time. Now, folks, look how rare this is. Uh, it's rare that I can get Tim to even call me, much less do an interview like this. So this is your opportunity to ask somebody who's actually done what you're doing now. Hopefully, you're doing the due diligence on the business, and uh, you know he's been through our training. When was that you came through training? Let's see. We just uh, celebrated our fifth anniversary with ABS, so it was April five years ago. Oh, wow. That's almost, yeah, just past five years. That's great. Well, I should send you a card or something, I guess. I don't know. Uh, sure. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. You've been, you, you've been far too kind anyway, so uh, nothing necessary. No, it, you said that you couldn't get me to even call you. Uh, you'd hear from me all the time if anything was wrong. So just <laughs> consider yourself lucky. Everything's fine. So. I guess that's good news, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is when you're actually down in our, uh, that's taken there in the hotel, isn't it? It Where is. It is yeah. Sure it is. Now, Tim, uh, here, give us a helicopter view of your business. Uh, you started in April five years ago. Just give us a helicopter view as to where you're at right now so people kind of get a feel for in five years where you, you could be in this business. Okay. Um, currently, uh, we have... Uh, it depends on what happens by the end of the week. We're going to be between 35 and 40 clients now, um, and not all of those are full revenue cycle management. Some of them we do consulting with. Some of them we do um, other services like uh, accounts receivable on their patient AR, and mostly just uh, creating um, statements for them and sending out statements uh, and doing a lot of customize, uh, customization of software, that sort of thing. Uh, but, but we have a, a pretty good stable of a revenue cycle uh, management where we're doing everything soup to nuts. So. Yeah, and, and so give us a feel for that because I know you were just talking before the webinar started, we were talking and you, you mentioned about hiring some people and having people in place. How, how many people uh, work for you in Rob? We have seven now, um, and uh, that's uh, it's been an, uh, a challenge just finding our equilibrium exactly the team that we wanted to put together, and it's it's been a, a long process, but we feel like that we've got a team we're going to have together for a very long time now, and it's hard to grow a business when you don't have the right team in place. Um, the thing that we loved about the opportunity initially was we wanted something that we could scale up, scale down uh, as our life and our needs changed. Um, and so Robin and I never really thought that we were going to want to grow the business to an astronomical size. Um, <laughs> and the challenge is, is getting the right team around you to help you to accomplish that. And so I think that we've only been limited by the amount of, of, of good help that we could find. And now that we've got it, it's, it's like I'm having to pump the brakes every couple of months, you know, because it's, 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 it's hard not to grow so fast. Uh, and that's a great problem to have. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, Tim, now let me ask you um, – can you give us just a feel? You've got seven people, so you must be you must be processing a lot of claims uh, with that many clients. Can you give us a feel for volume of any kind, dollar volume, uh, or number of claims? 
Yeah, every person's processing about 1,500 claims a month. So we're 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 gonna we're gonna push uh, processing three million dollars worth of claims this year. Oh, that's fantastic! Love to hear that, Tim. Now, for people who are just looking into the business, they don't really know anything about how how money is generated in the business. You are uh, billing for the doctors, the insurance companies, and Medicare, and you're you're bringing in the cash. So, how do you get paid? Well, we take a we take a percentage of the overall collections. Uh, everybody's just a little bit different, but uh, we take the collections, the 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 gross collections, and we take our piece of that, uh, and then we pay for the software services, uh, the licenses that uh, we have to out of all of that, and it's a and it's a very nice margin left over. So uh, most licensees nationwide are, are billing on a percentage basis like you are, Tim, and they're, they're usually between uh, 5 and, and, say, 8%. Are you somewhere in that range? I am okay. uh, on, the, on the higher end of that, but yes. Okay. Good. Well, I did the math, and uh, even <laughs> on the lower end, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> well, so you and, you and Robin are full-time, obviously, at this point. Uh, what... Uh, Give us a feel for your background. What kind of background do you have and, and, and Robin's? Uh, really funny. Uh, Robin, uh, uh, the reason that we started looking at uh, health care was because she had worked uh, as an executive uh, admin assistant to a CEO for a company that um, built and managed outpatient surgery centers. Mm. And so she kind of had a feel for all the different aspects working for the CEO because she had to handle all the different uh, aspects of the facilities and the providers and that sort of thing. So she had a pretty good understanding of what was going on and what entailed. But she had been like an executive level uh, uh, administrative person for a number of years and um, she had uh, most recently been working for the, uh, I think that they may be the largest independently owned Coca-Cola bottler in the world here in Birmingham. They've bought up a bunch of other areas and they're huge. And she was working for the division vice president uh, for about eight years. Um, wow. And as far as me, I was a sales guy. I had been in the musical instrument business. Um, I had worked for a number of musical instrument manufacturers and I knew how to sell. Um, and so uh, that, that was good and bad when it comes to the ABS. I'll tell you that story in just a second. But um, the uh, because you guys had it figured out and I didn't, so <laughs> I'm glad we found one another. <laughs> but uh, I, I actually started an independent rep firm where I had guys running around the country selling, um, you know, as independent reps for manufacturers and that sort of thing. And I'd had that business for 10 years, and I just about three weeks ago sold that business to go into this, you know, as my only source of income. Yeah. Um, wow. So I completely left what was my entire career to go do this because of the opportunity. Um, so but, well, neither of you had any background in the medical field. No, she she had been exposed to it, but and kind of understood what was going on. But uh, neither of us knew, uh, had a clue about billing or, or revenue management for um, any reason. So yeah. you know, we, were, we were complete novices. Yeah. Uh, so you were going to share with us something about uh, selling uh, and what you'd learned from us and so forth. Well, if there's anybody that's on this call, er every once in a while you guys have people do their due diligence and call us and we tell them about our experiences. And I tell everybody this story that I was the worst ABS licensee ever <laughs> in the history of ABS because I came to training thinking that, well, selling is, you know, not the thing that I really need help with. I got this. And everything that I learned at training was counterintuitive than there to everything that I'd ever been taught about selling. <laughs> and I thought, okay, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And I went out and I said, I've got this. I know how to do this. And I went out and did it my way for six months without a single client. Not oh. one single client. Not even oh. a prospect. 
And so I went back and I said, okay, I give up. I'm going to do it exactly as you trained me. And I went back through all the materials and I did it step by step exactly as I was trained. And I had my first client in two months. And <laughs> and it's just been never looked back since then. So I it's so hard for me to admit that I'm wrong. But boy, was I wrong. And thank goodness we found each other. Well, I'm, I'm glad you did figure that out, Tim, because some people never figure that out. They, you know, hey, I know better and I'll do it my way no matter what. And uh, so they really struggle. Uh, even to some people on the webinar, you know, two months sounds like a long time to find a client. But, you know, this is uh, this is a real business, isn't it? I mean, with oh, real yeah. income potential. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they don't. And if somebody just did a gasp when I when I said that I went six months without a client, well, thank goodness I had set myself up for six months of no income. You know, I mean, it yeah. was like I I had anticipated that it was going to be slow going, but I didn't anticipate six months or longer. I, Patrick, look, it took me three years to pull the trigger. I kept seeing this opportunity. I was looking at things like, like subways, and back in the day, it was uh, mailboxes, etc., and not UPS stores. I was looking at all that, and those were the things I was looking at when I found ABS. And I couldn't figure out how on earth you could offer, uh, you know, like lifetime free support without a, a residual. Yeah, I, I just couldn't figure it out. And then when somebody finally explained it to me, it was like the light bulb went off. And the only regret that I have about the whole thing is not doing it three years sooner. So, well, I didn't realize that, Tim. That's the first time I've ever heard from you that you uh, uh, had spent three years, you know, looking at different businesses and trying to decide what to start. And yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So, so it was. It was like I. I, I totally wish that I had done it three years sooner. I, I can't imagine where we would be by now. Well, I, I kind of want to touch on that for people who don't understand uh, that that what you just touched on. That's a great point. Uh, let me throw this slide up, and it'll kind of illustrate. This is these are the other services besides the the, the uh, billing system and the electronic medical record system that you can offer to doctors. You've also got these other six different services that you can offer to doctors. And ABS actually makes money on all of those services when you offer them to the doctor. You don't pay us anything, but the technology partners that we're connected with on these services behind the scenes do. And so we have an income. Uh, when you when you make money, we make money. So that's why we can offer lifetime support. At one time, Tim, I don't, I don't know, did we offer it? I guess five years ago we were offering it. But just shortly before that, we only had like a year's support. Uh, and then we went to two years. And at one point, I brought everybody into a conference room and I said, look, if we're making money on the back end, why wouldn't we want to support people forever? Mm -hmm. So, so we just do that now. Yeah. I mean, I don't well, know if you're getting any support from us now, but five years later, you can still call us for anything. Well, it's a, it's a brilliant business model and, and, you know, kudos to you for uh, coming up with this. We've been the beneficiary of not having to pay royalties on a franchise um, all this time. And, and, for the foreseeable future, there will be none, and I just love the the way that you've designed the whole business, and uh, I feel humbled that you're asking me to be on a webinar like this. This is this thing's been so good for me, and I, and the entire um, family uh, from ABS, it just feels like that. It feels like family, and I didn't expect that. Yeah, well, we, we kind of present ourselves pretty uh, fairly professional, I think, at least doing these webinars. We've been doing this for, you know, 23 years, but it is a family business, and I like people to know that because uh, my wife and I started doing billing back in the late 80s. Uh, the, the kids got involved as they got older, and now they're, my, my son's the president of the company. My, my daughter is still working with the company as a business coach, so it is a family business, and that's very rare in today's world that, you know, a family can work together without killing each other. Oh, I, and I don't know if you even know this, but your son, Adam, was the one that put up with me for three years asking questions. Oh, no, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Adam was the guy, huh? Yeah. Well, hey, uh, we've talked a little bit about marketing, and I wanted to show you something, Tim, that I'm, I'm revealing here for the very first time on this webinar because I want people to know that there is no uh, 
well, it's not it's not the typical like you like you were taught, Tim, to sell, right? It's a it's a consultant type uh, sale, and that means that you have to learn the exact ways to interact with doctors. So mm -hmm. I just partnered with a doctor, Dr. Vicki Ragner, and uh, we wrote a book on how to get more doctor clients. Uh, so this is specifically proprietary information that we're publishing for our licensees. Is this brand see, new? This is brand new. Uh, okay, we just, I haven't seen this. This is great. Yeah, no, this is just the artwork for the cover, but we, we really haven't even published it. We're about 70% done on the, the content, so it'll be out probably within the next month. But uh, look at the subtitle, your blueprint for explosive business growth by acquiring all the doctor clients you can handle. Now, having said that, Tim, let's talk about where you are in your business right now because okay. I, know, I don't know that you need any more clients right now. <laughs> hey, let me show this. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I can write a sequel to the, uh, to the book called Pump the Brakes Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm growing too fast. What do I do? All right, so let me show this picture, Tim. Uh, this is uh, you up front there. You can barely see that that's Tim, but uh, he's in a room of how many, how many doctors are in that room? Uh, this is actually a front office staff for um, a bunch of podiatrists uh, in Oklahoma. There were about 80 or 90 uh, front and back office workers, wow. and I'm doing a presentation to them. That's fantastic. Uh, that was at the state, state conference uh, a month ago. And, and were you invited? How did you get to, you know, to, to speak there? Look, this is, this is the craziest thing. Um, I, I never envisioned myself doing a lot of the things that have come my way just because of the training that I got from ABS and all of the support of the technology partners that you brought to us, that sort of thing. I was invited to speak. Um, and it all goes back to the thing that I just never really understood that I kept getting drilled into me at, at training, which was position yourself as the expert, position yourself as the expert. Mm -hmm. And when I finally understood what that meant and I started doing networking the right way to make that happen, that's when all the other uh, the opportunities that we never even talked about. Uh, I never even dreamed of, like speaking at events like this, uh, like doing webinars, like, uh, you know, and I've been asked to uh, create, and we're working on a, a YouTube channel right now with video content for medical practices. And so all of those things have just come out of position yourself as the expert and I'm getting invitations to do things like this. It's it's amazing. We're actually on the corporate advisory board for a podiatric medicine association now. So it's kind of amazing. That is incredible. Now so are you are you continuing to add new clients or are you kind of happy with what you got? Well, we're continuing to add, but uh, the, the beautiful thing is is that you can become a little bit more selective and uh, you can take the clients that make sense and you're not just scrambling around to get anybody that you can. And so I've actually had an opportunity to be a little bit more selective about who we take. Um, so did, have you gotten any uh, doctors from these speech, speaking engagements? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, the podiatric medicine uh, conference that I spoke at in January in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Fort Lauder yeah, Fort Lauderdale, um, we wound up getting uh, five clients out of that, uh, out of that one thing, and we didn't even have a big display. All we had was a table, and we did one-to-one, -one, uh, and that's the beautiful display. That was the Texas uh, State. Uh, conference uh, for the Podiatric Medicine Association. It sounds like all we do is podiatry, but it's not. Uh, it's just we've we've kind of hit a, a mother load there, and we've wound up uh, getting referred a lot in the podiatric world. Yeah, sure. Sometimes licensees become specialists in a particular uh, medical field, and they didn't intend to. It just uh, one podiatrist knows another, and uh, the referrals start happening, don't they? 
Exactly, and, and and I gotta tell you, I, I really feel like that that's a good business model. Uh, is that after after you get started, if you find this one little niche uh, and you can kind of narrow your focus, it becomes easier to get really good at it. And yeah. then the the better you get at it, the more clients that motivate toward you because they want to be where all the action is. Sure. And so we've been really fortunate that way. Tim, would you mind sharing, uh, you, you said yesterday when we were talking, uh, something about a, a doctor had called you from one of these, and it was sometime after the convention, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had, As a matter of fact, I, I have a phone call with that doctor tomorrow, and um, she, uh, she called me up and says, are you still accepting new uh, clients? And I was like, yeah, I I think that we can find room for you. Sure. <laughs> hey, that's uh, that's where everybody needs to be in business, right? Uh, I, I tell you what, I, I I never want to pound on doors again because if you position it right, they pound your door. And yeah. I never thought a doctor would ask me, "Are you still accepting new clients?" <laughs> so. Hey, you mentioned also uh, that we teach you to be, you know, the uh, the expert in your field and, and people wonder how am I going to be able to do that because you know I'm not the expert right at this point I, I don't have any expertise so how is it that I'm going to position myself that way so uh, I want to show here let me see if this is showing now yeah this is uh, the book that I showed earlier that as you can see folks at the very bottom you can actually have your name on the front cover of this book you use it as a marketing tool. You give it to a doctor. It's a paperback book uh, that Dr. Ragnar and I wrote, and uh, and so your name is right there on the front. We uh, we let you write the forward to it, or you can use a, a template that we have, <clears throat> and then uh, of course you can put the initials C M R M because you're certified as a medical revenue manager right there on the cover of the book. And after the forward, we let you put your contact information. So talk about a great giveaway business card. It doesn't get any better than this, Tim. Well, you, you don't, you know, you had some great materials uh, when I came through that I was provided with, but this is, that's just priceless right there. Yeah. You can't buy that kind of advertising. No, and even though this book retails for uh, $24.95 on Amazon, you can give it to a doctor and your cost is our printing cost, $4 for this mm -hmm. paperback book. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Tim, let me uh, let me get here to another picture. Uh, what is this picture all about here? I see you and Robin on either side of some young lady there. Uh, that is Dr. Mia Cowan. She was our first um, client. She's a gynecologist in Birmingham, Alabama. And are you still um, doing belly with her? We, we certainly are. We still have that first client that we uh, ever had, and that was uh, when we were doing implementation with her. Um, wow. Now, you sent me an email here that I clipped out the artwork. I'm going to show it here, Tim. Tell us about uh, this picture. Uh, she uh, she has something in common with you now. She is an author, and she just did her book launch party, and she has a book on Amazon called A Woman's Guide to Total Wellness that she just authored, and she's hitting the speaking tour. I think it's kind of cool. You know, I mean, I don't want to be presumptuous. I'd like to believe that we had something to do with her growing her business um, because it, it, her business was barely a year old and they're, they've are they over doubled uh, in the time that we've been with them. Wow. And so now she has uh, another provider that she's brought in and she's got it to a point where she can actually do the book tours and uh, do things like that and, and the speaking tours. Um, and we've been very fortunate to be associated with her the whole time. That is an incredible story, Tim. I'm so proud of you and, uh, you know, her. That for a, for a woman to write a book like that, a doctor, what a great credibility builder. You know, you, you would trust mm -hmm. somebody like that, right? So that's why we do the book publishing with you as licensees and put your name on the front cover of the book. Huge credibility, automatic credibility when you're an author or you even write a forward to a book that's written by a doctor, you know. You bet. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, we've got a question here from Tim. And, folks, this is your chance to, to ask questions. 
of Tim, Tim Warren. Uh, this is Tim, uh, another Tim that's asking this question. Uh, he just says, so how did you get your first client? Well, uh, we, um, <laughs> the thing that I did not see the value in, which was joining network organization, networking organizations, and they had suggestions in the uh, training of some of the ones that they felt like were of high value that you could have um, key influencer type uh, interactions with uh, in a networking organization. Uh, I plopped down my money and I joined a networking organization and I found Dr. Cowan in there. She was uh, promoting a new segment of her business which was um, aesthetic services and, and overall wellness and weight loss, that sort of thing. So she had joined that organization just to promote that and so we wound up being in the same networking organization. We talked, she said, hey, at that time, she had uh, a person that was working at the hospital just doing part-time billing for her at night, and that was a nightmare. She could never get in touch with her during the day, and she didn't get the kind of follow-up. And so she saw the value in having a full-time biller, and we started talking and um, made her a proposal. She accepted it, and we've been together ever since. That is incredible. What a great story. Uh, let's see. Um, I have a picture here. Let me see if I can find it while I'm doing that. I'm looking at some more questions coming in here. By the way, there were a lot of people that showed up. Uh, I read out in people's names and where they were from at the, at the beginning, but there's a whole list of folks here that uh, came in after that. Okay, here it is. Uh, this is a great question here. It's uh, amazing because I usually chase people off about halfway through. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I think people are glued to their seats right now listening to Tim. Uh, okay, so because they probably did the math like I did earlier and figure out that you are now making a, a nice nice income. Here's uh, Richard, he says, where did you get your billing staff? You know, it's uh, we have uh, a couple of community colleges here. Uh, uh, you know, like two-year colleges that have uh, billing programs in them, and we developed a, uh, a relationship with one of them in particular. Uh, they had a good instructor over there, and we started doing an intern program. Uh, so we were able to get people that just wanted to get experience in that, and so we hired them, and, and we, we work from home, so all of our employees are virtual employees. So everybody gets to work from home. We feel like we wanted to work from home. We felt like that doctors won't come to our office. They want us to come to them. So we didn't see the value in having to have a place of business. And so with the virtual employees, we were able to get people that were maybe working other jobs, you know, for a practice and they wanted to come home. And I've got a never ending stream now that we're in practices. I have people that are working in their offices. I'd love to work from home. You guys hiring? And we it happens to me all the time now. Yeah. And so that's that's where we found them. It's a, it's been a, a little bit of the local college and our internships and Robin trains them to do what they need to do in our system. Uh, and then it's been a lot of word of mouth, just networking out there amongst all the practices that we go see. Yeah, uh, there's lots of people who know how to do medical billing. What they don't know, of course, is how to build a business. And uh, that's why a lot of people, you know, purchase our license is because we've got the system that's already worked out. It's not that you couldn't start your own medical billing business. My wife and I did, but it took us about five years to get to, you know, the point where we were even knowing what we we're doing. All right, let's see. Here's one from Lamar, and I don't know a whole lot about this, Tim, so I hope you do. <laughs> do you get questions about macro? And how do you deal with those questions? It's funny because uh, I just got a request from Dr. Cowan's office today. Say we'd like to do a, a like a a lunch and learn about macro and MIPS um, right away. And and I think that's an opportunity. You know, if you're trying to find a way to establish yourself as an expert, 
that is a hot button topic with everyone. And if you can do everything you can to familiarize yourself with macro and MIPS so you can speak intelligently about it. And I got to tell you, if you just go to CMS.gov, they have tons of webinar content that they've created for that. And so uh, if you go and really learn everything that you can about it, attend everything, and then create your own program to present at no charge to practices and position yourself as a, an expert in that field, wow, uh, that's, that would be one of the easiest ways that I can think to position yourself as an expert. Yeah, well, that's basically what you do when you're you're speaking at some of these conventions. You're you're doing what we call educational marketing. You're yes. educating the doctors and the office staff about different subjects. And uh, even though this one may not make sense to anybody else on the webinar, Lamar has obviously uh, done his research and kind of knows what macro is. Folks, yes. there's all kinds of new stuff coming around in this uh, industry. That's why I love this industry, Tim, because it's just constantly you know, new stuff that you have to keep up with. Well, we help our licensees keep up with that stuff on our licensee website, a private website that mm -hmm. you'll have access to. And we're constantly educating with new webinars. We do a webinar just about once a week now, Tim, for licensees. You're probably too busy to even attend them now. <laughs> I, I attend every time that I possibly can. And uh, Jordan and I are talking about creating some content uh, for the LSS. Uh, that would be helpful to licensees, and we're also talking about doing some additional uh, live webinars uh, on how to for existing licensees. Yeah, I, I knew that you had done some webinars for Jordan in the past. Uh, Jordan is our director of operations, and I'm really not involved in a lot of that, but I, I know that I've seen your name listed there on our schedule, and you've done some in the past, haven't you? I, I'm just more of a more or less the nuts and bolts guy, the the how do I do this guy. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, I'll leave all of the uh, the wizardry around marketing to you guys. <laughs> I learn right. I learn more than I paid for. Uh, it, you know, after we got our first client, Patrick, <laughs> we made our investment back on the first client in the first year. You know, so I, I don't know any other opportunity that I can say that about. So I'll never think that I'm smarter than the people that are trying to train me uh, anymore. So. Yeah, you know, that that's a good point that might not have sunk in with people just now, Tim. Uh, folks, uh, most small businesses starting out, they don't see the, the black ink. They're in the red for, you know, the first two years usually. I mean, if you, right. if you survive for two years, you're doing great. And if you're making money after the first year, I mean, literally, you've paid off all your investment in the business and you're making money. That's a good thing. Yep. You bet. Definitely. Uh, okay, here's a question from Richard. He says, what were some of the most important issues that were highlighted by your clients? I guess the big, biggest challenges maybe he means. Um, well, it... <laughs> Part of the beauty of our industry right now, and it's funny what you said earlier, it's really not that expensive or that hard to start up a billing business. It's particularly hard to be successful at it if you don't have some fantastic guidance. It's a lot of work uh, if you were trying to do it on your own. And I'm, I'm particularly pleased that we did it that way. Most of what um, we were hearing uh, from day one is that it's getting harder and harder to make uh, any money as a physician. And so uh, a lot of people got really worried because they think, oh, uh, physicians in my area are getting bought up by the hospital, hospital. And we saw some of that going on too. But man, for every one of those, there's three more that pop up. And there are startups. And there are... There are people that are mid-career, there are people end of career that are getting ready to retire, and there are new people coming up to buy those practices. And yeah. we're, seeing, we're seeing people that, that said, I can't make any money, and that was kind of where Dr. Cowan was at. And so we said, okay, let's come up with a plan to help you make more money. And so those are the kinds of things they're having a hard time because – uh, PQRS is a program that penalizes people that don't um, deliver certain types of reporting to uh, Medicare 
And so they start dinging you for these little things. And our technology partners that we we work with have been very good at tracking things like meaningful use and MIPS and MACRA and PQRS. And so we showed them a better way. That's how we were able to overcome that, hey, they won't let me make any money. Um, we hear that and we hear the paperwork's getting harder and harder. And that's the other way to position yourself as an expert and overcome those objections is that we have a system that Patrick had in the iClaim and the EMRX that is so flexible and it's so customizable that we can actually make the documentation process so much easier for a physician that they can actually get their notes done by the end of the day instead of going home and charting all night. So those are the things they they hate the charting and they can't make enough money. Those are the big ones. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked specifically about macro, so I put this on the screen here, folks. You can actually go to uh, this is the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services dot mm -hmm. gov and uh, search for macro m a c r a. You'll see that there's lots of information out there about that. Uh, Somebody's asking what that means and so forth. So, uh, folks, again, we don't mean to get too bogged down in some of the details here, but that's stuff you'll learn when you come through our live training workshop. Um, let's see, Millie, Gross, Millie uh, says, Tim, you mentioned you just left your other company after five years to do this. Why did it take five years for you? I don't have five years or six months like you mentioned. I really no. need to okay, yeah, yeah, let me clarify. I owned, I owned a company for 10 years and for the last five years, I basically have just been doing nothing but taking a paycheck from it and I haven't done anything in it. And then I got an opportunity to sell that company to the employees and so I just let it go and that was my goodbye gift. I, I There was a part of me that just wanted to give the company to the employees because this is going so well, but hey, who's going to, who's going to turn down a payday? Yeah, so, that's right. I sold it to him really cheap, but uh, that that's, I wasn't really doing anything in the other company after we started this one. And I, frankly, it was nothing but a distraction to me because we had gotten so busy with this. That's the only reason that I hadn't let it go sooner. Yeah. Well, and uh, Millie says she's got uh, two years of billing background, which is uh, a, a huge leap on what you that's, had. You had that's none. A, somebody <laughs> ahead of the game right there. So. All right. Uh, Tim says, how long did it take for your billing company to provide you and your wife a full-time income? Well, um, when we got our first client, um, Robin was helping me at night when she got away from her gig. And I think she only worked there for about six months. And we, uh, six months into our first full-time client, we were both full-time. Um, and we, we put a lot of money back into the business um, along the way. And so uh, I guess that we've been drawing a paycheck from it since sometime within that first year of the first client. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't take a lot of clients really to generate uh, some it pretty good revenue. No. Uh, but then as you grow, of course, you're going to have some expenses, especially if you've got other people doing the work. You're not doing it anymore. You're turning that over to somebody else. You're going to have to pay them something. But yeah. I would say even uh, after doing that, you still have some, you know, nice profit. This this business, Tim, when you say this, Tim, Tim this business is, is mainly labor, so it, it probably mm -hmm. has more uh, net revenue for an owner than, than most businesses. There's no inventory. There's no product. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's why I was saying after you, after you take care of your licenses and your, your labor, it's still a really nice margin. And I have um, a brilliant friend of mine who's a multimillionaire and he looked at our business model and he says, can't believe the margins you're looking at there. He said, all you got to do is just explode it up to a, a a large number of clients and that's going to be a windfall. So, yeah, uh, I think most business people who look at this, we have people ask us all the time for, from business people who have been in business. What, why are you selling this license for only $26,000? You know, when, when it has the potential that it has, 
And again, we'd rather have more people out there doing billing because we make money on the back end than yep. sitting some unrealistic, uh, you know, hundred thousand dollar investment like like most franchises are. Um, uh, okay, Richard says, how many states do you operate in, and was there any licensing considerations in those states? Um, no, I mean we we're nationwide. We we're doing business in. Uh, we have currently, uh, let's see, we're coast to coast. We've got people from New Jersey to Oregon right now. We've got Georgia. We've got Texas. We've got uh, let's see, Jersey, Ohio, Michigan, Tennessee, Florida. Uh, we had North Dakota. We were doing that as a, uh, a temporary contract. They were going to take it back in house, but they needed somebody for a temporary time period. We did that for about a year and a half until they could get their own in-house billing staff set up uh, in North Dakota. Uh, let's see. We also have New Mexico. Oh, I can't think off the top of my head, but we were we were able to cultivate things, and as well as Alabama. But we have we have more clients out of our state than we have in our state, and I never expected that either. And that's all because of me going and speaking at the conferences. Hello. Sorry, Tim. I had muted my uh, mic there just for a second to listen to a little link that uh, Lamar sent me here. I'm gonna I put that in the uh, in the chat box, folks. You can see a YouTube there that Lamar has shared on Macra. Thank you, Lamar. Oh. Appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Anyway, I muted there. Uh, so I was saying basically that you know uh, a lot of people don't realize that uh, what were we talking about I've already lost track of what I was uh, saying <laughs> we were talking about where were we doing business and I was naming all the states and I was oh, like yeah, yeah. we we have more clients out of uh, the state of Alabama than we have in the state of Alabama and that's just by virtue of the me going and speaking at the conferences and doing things like that and uh, if you sign up a doctor in your area that knows a doctor in another state then it's pretty simple to get that doctor in another state signed up because they're they're already sold. They're they're ready to just do the paperwork. And, and that's that's kind of how it works. It's like I don't have to do a lot. I just do a live demo, and it's kind of done after that. They just want to see that I know what I'm talking about, and the software does what it's supposed to. And then it's like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Uh, here's another link I'm putting in the chat box there that Lamar has sent. This is great stuff, Lamar. Thank you. I need to hire Lamar just to do all the research behind the scenes for me. There you go, a researcher. <laughs> right. Um, you know, uh, Tim, a lot of people don't understand uh, either uh, how you actually get paid literally from the doctor. Can you kind of explain once you've done your billing, what, what's the process uh, to let the doctor know, hey, uh, you owe us this much money? Well, we changed everything this year, and I highly recommend this. We went, uh, and everybody has to have either a credit or debit card on file with us, and it's automatically charged uh, at the end of the billing cycle. So what we do is we um, we take all of the net collections and that sort of thing. We calculate uh, what it is. We send them a link to uh, all the details and then issue them an online invoice and say here's your invoice, you, here's the link to all of your details if you want to review it, uh, you, your card will be processed in five days. And it just processes and shows up in the bank. It's amazing uh, how many licensees, they, they hear us teach that in the workshop that that's how you should set the doctor up from the get-go and most of them don't at first and then they realize hey that's a much easier way to get paid from the doctor <laughs> yeah but we we allowed them to uh, pay us by check or pay us by invoice for a while and we just realized that in many cases they're just too scattered to do it uh, when they're supposed to uh, yeah. It's not not that they don't plan on paying you. It's just that you have to have a plan in place that's just kind of automatic, because you know you just you, cash flow is king, and so you've got to make sure you get paid on time. And uh, once we did that, we've had no f backlash. We didn't have anybody leave. 
um, that sort of thing. And so if you set it up that way from the beginning, I'd highly recommend it. Well, if you're bringing in for the doctor revenue, and mm -hmm. Tim, I would say in, in most cases you increase their revenue, then yes. why would they why would they hesitate to pay you? It's it's like like you said, it's just because they're too busy. Uh, it's not that they don't want to. They will. And so when you offer the ability to automatically uh, say, hey, you can see in our system how much money we collected for you this month. Uh, uh, Six percent of that or seven percent of that is this. Uh, so we're mm -hmm. going to you know debit your card. I mean that's a no brainer for me as if I were a doctor. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've, I've had uh, doctors uh, actually reach out to me, like in the evening, like send me a text message or something like that and I would actually respond and they said how many hours a week do you work I said all of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like people ask me all the time can I do this part-time and I go well of course you can you can work any 12-hour period of the day you wish <laughs> that's right <laughs> because at first let's face it folks if you plan on just working 40 hours a week like you do for your current job you probably won't make it in business for yourself, not 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 just in this business, but any business. That's it right. It takes a lot of hours to get a business off and running, but boy, once you do, and you got that residual income coming in month after month after month, it's a great feeling to have, isn't it, Tim? Tim? Sure is. Um, let's see. Dan says, when trying to find our first doctor, Tim, how common will it be to find doctors that do their own billing in house? And how difficult would it be to get them to outsource it to me? Well, it's not uncommon to find somebody with an in-house biller, but uh, I tell you, it's gotten so complex uh, for yeah. doctors to do that internally because of the uh, the rate of change uh, of the the laws governing medical uh, reimbursement that you're going to find. Uh, practices that have billers that are reaching burnout. Uh, they just can't keep up with it. They can't, they're months behind in billing and processing payments. Uh, it's, it's amazing to me. And so it's not that difficult to find one that has a pain point. Um, so they're either unhappy with their current billing company. And, and look, uh, we're able to compete successfully against some of the biggest billing companies in the business. And if you'd have told me four years ago that I might displace um, uh, an industry leader as their, someone's billing company, I, I just don't think I could have believed it, but it's happening now. You just replaced Aetna? Is that who? Uh, Athena. Athena, yeah. Yeah, a wow. Athena. They're kind of arguably the the big boys in our space. Yeah. And, um, you know, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, I guess, but we have just displaced them in a couple of practices, and we're about to in one more, so. That's him. You know what, Tim? I, I, too, would not have believed that that could be possible a few years back. Now, before we had our cloud-based system, we, we didn't have a lot of big competitive advantage in the marketplace, but boy, right. with this cloud-based system, it just knocks all the, everybody else out, doesn't it? I mean, we're... It we're, does. We're, it, it's it's yeah. a better mousetrap. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Tim says, are your data entry personnel uh, 1099? Are they contractors? Yes. Or? Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I have some management level that are actually on salary, but uh, oh. for the most part, they're all 1099. Yeah. All right, Tim, we're down to about four minutes, so I'm going to wrap it up. Sure. Uh, one last question. Tim also asked, have you used sales reps? You know, I, I, I would say that I, I've thought more about that lately than ever, but I, I have not used sales reps. What we've had is we've had great partners. In the process of positioning yourself as an expert, you will find others that have done the same. And we have found a couple of particularly uh, good key influencer type relationships and all of our stuff is coming to us through warm referrals. So yeah, I would say I would say that they are our salespeople and you know I think that I probably need to enter into an agreement to keep that a, a, a great relationship. But yeah, yeah I think sales reps are good just there are other ways to accomplish that. Yeah. 
All right. Well, there's a couple of questions coming in, folks. We can't get to all of them today because I got to wrap it up here at the hour. I've got another conference call, but Tim, thank you so much for taking the time out today. I'm sure this has been very encouraging and helpful to a lot of people trying to make a decision on this. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. Bye for now.